words it. The call to perfection. That will be the title for today's word. The call to perfection. Um, this is an imperfect world. And no human being living on the face of the earth can be perfected without God. It doesn't matter how intelligent a person is, how well educated, how smart. And we do have smart people in our world today. You know, and God made man, he gave him or her ability. He gave ability to mankind. So your child could be the smartest in the school. God gave that child that ability. Amen? But overall, we need God. A call to perfection. First, we're going to turn to the book of Genesis chapter 17. And we're going to read, uh, start there. Maybe go into our other scriptures as we go on. But I just want to, to bring to our understanding that we need, we have an obligation to listen to the God's word and to hear to know what he's saying to us. What is he trying to do to his creation? Amen. Are we hearing his call? Are we understanding that we are not just here to enjoy life, have fun, but that we are God's children, created in his image, living in a, we are a spiritual being, living in a physical body. Okay, so don't think your body is the real you. It's your house where your spirit lives. Amen. Your spirit knows more than you know. Your spirit even know when you're leaving earth. And your body don't know anything. All right? So don't use your body to be your, your, your guideline for how you feel and what you look like. Amen. Your spirit never grow old. And that's what God is after. Right? Now let's get to the book. It said, and when Abraham was 90 years old and nine, 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham, Abraham and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make, of, I will make my covenant between me and thee and all and will multiply thy, thee exceedingly. And Abraham fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be called Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee, and I will make thee exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee, and I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee in their generation, for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee, and unto thy seed after thee. Amen. So here we see that God appear unto Abraham. After that mankind has lost their way, God made an effort to reach back mankind. After Satan destroyed the earth, come and, and did what he did in the garden, and mankind was thrust out of the presence of God and was now on their own and getting worse. But God looked down and he saw a man. His name was Abraham. This man was not a righteous man. There were other men living in the earth, but somehow this, this man, Abraham, he was not even... Righteous. He was an idol worshiper. Amen. He was an idol worshiper, but God saw something in Abraham. You know, you may see somebody on the street and they look so de 
degrading and they don't look like anything. But God can pick up that man, that woman, from off the street and make them into something, right? So God saw Abraham. He was not perfect. He was an idol worshiper. He worshiped stone. I think there are people still having that box that he used to worship around. They still have it. Some people worshiping it around the box with nothing in the box. Abraham is not in that box. God is not in it. However, God spoke to Abraham and said, Abraham, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Amen. He told him that he was made, he's going to make a covenant, a covenant between me and you. Amen. Abraham fell on his face before the Lord, and the Lord continued to speak to Abraham and to let him know what his future, what his holds. Abraham didn't even have a child at that time, but God didn't, Abraham couldn't see the future. God sees the future. And God told him, I was going to bless you. I'm going to multiply you exceedingly. Amen? Um, nations are going to come out of your loins. Nations are coming out. Amen? So God continued to establish his covenant with Abraham. And though Abraham did not see any, anything coming for many, many years... But nevertheless, Abraham believed God, and by faith, he continued to, to walk with God. I'm just saying this to say that we in this generation may think that that's all story. But guess what? God has made a covenant with this generation. He has made an everlasting covenant Amen. The word I've said, come unto me, all you that are labored and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God is calling you today, me today, everyone in the earth today to come. God wants to make a covenant with you. And that covenant that he wants to make with you is that he wants to save your soul. He wants to bring you back to himself. And if only that we will listen and understand God is speaking. Amen? He's, you're not going, Abraham actually did not see God person, but he heard the voice came and it spoke to him. But today, how is God speaking to us today? Jesus came, who is God, person. God's person came. God came in person, and he's the same God who spoke to Abraham is the same one that is speaking today, Jesus Christ. Amen? Don't look for another. In 1 first, um, in first Corinthians 5, 17, 1 to 18, verse eight, um, 5, 17 to 18, he said, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things become new. So when one comes to Jesus Christ, he made a covenant to change your life. He changes Abraham's name from Abram to Abraham. Amen? So he changes the name. When you come to Jesus he changes you, he changes your heart, changes your will, your mind. He gives you a new name. Everyone that is going to heaven is going to be identified by the name Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? That's your new name that God gives you. They may call you Jesus only. They may call you Jesus people or whatever they want to call you. But that name that he has given to you it's a new name, and it's a name that you are redeemed under. Amen? So, yes, if you're in Christ, you're a new creature. And people who have been redeemed, and I'm, I'm not just saying when people tell you to say the sinner's prayer, you know, and you repeat the sinner's prayer, 
and they told you now you've been born again. It's not, it's, it's not just that. That's just an invitation. Don't settle at that. There is an experience. There's something that God is going to do, and you are going to know it. You are going to feel it. You are going to be transformed. Amen? You're going to be motivated. You're going to be a witness. Praise be to God. Amen? So we talk about the if any man be in Christ, you're a new creature, old things, your whole lifetime, whole lifestyle has been passed. When, you're be, when God saved you from your sin, he saved you. Don't go back and in your youth from your childhood and begin to bring up stuff. When God saved you, he saved you. He took you out, out of the old lifestyle, took out all the, the, the sin that you have, that you were born with, what you did since you come, and he make you new. He wash you, cleanse you, and bring you into the fold. You are new. And anybody want to point at what you used to do before? They can keep the garbage. God already took you out. Amen? And sometimes the devil will bring you those things back and to try to, to, to gravitate at you and to bring you back to the, his mess, but tell him, get behind me, Satan. The Lord has delivered me. Amen? New creature. All things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Christ Jesus. How have we been reconciled? By Christ Jesus. No one can save us. Only Jesus has the power. And he hath given us the ministry of reconciliation. When you've been reconciled, he also give you the authority and power to go out and reconcile others to God. Amen? That's why I said be a witness. Number 19 says, To wit there, to wit, which means to know, that God it was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them. God is spirit, right? When he made us, he gave us of himself. That's why we have a spirit. So God, who is spirit, made flesh to dwell in, which he called his son, Jesus. So Jesus is God's image. So don't be carried away by when Jesus referred to my father, he's referring to the spirit, you know, to the spirit that is in him, right? All things are of God, who hath reconciled us unto himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given us the ministry of recon reconciliation. To wit, to know that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them. So he, didn't, he wasn't charging us for the things that we've done in our lives or what we were born with. People think is what makes you sinner is not the things you do. You were born a sinner, okay? We were born corrupt, evil the evil nature of because of what Satan did, so his, his disease of disobedience into the, into the mind of mankind and corrupt them. Disobedience is the first sin, right? That's why it is today, if, you're, if you don't obey the law and you run through the light, you disobey, what's going to happen? You're either going to get killed, you get thrown in jail, take away your car, or whatever. Disobedience. Is the first sin, so the enemy corrupt mankind. So it is because there is a corrupt nature. If you do not turn yourself over to God, that corrupt nature, it doesn't matter how educated you are, that evil will get more sophisticated. That's why the people in high places, they're still corrupt like the man that never learned. Because that evil nature lies there, and it cannot, it cannot be uh, taken out by education. Amen? Only God can remove the sin nature. 
Only Jesus Christ, your man can, when you subdue yourself to him, he can remove it. Amen. You may try to be good, don't steal, don't tell any lie, but you can't take out that sin nature. It's going to, it's going to pop up again. Right? So we need Jesus. Amen? So Jesus didn't charge us for our sins because we are innocent. All right? Go, uh, continue to read. He said, So God did not lay any charge to Abraham when, um, when he, he called him, and he, though he was an idol worshiper, he didn't lay any charge. So when he called us, he's not laying charges to your sin. He's calling you to change you, to transform you, to make a covenant with you. Amen? Um, so when he called Abraham, he gave him a new a new name, right? He, he, he gave him a new God. Abraham, God now is going to be this, the living God, the almighty God, not any more stones. So when God called you, amen, you leave the old lifestyle and you come to know Jesus. So he will give you a brand new name, amen, a brand new land. Abraham received a brand new land. Amen. Leave your country. Leave what you have, your people, and go to a land that I will give you. If you want to serve God today, you have to separate yourself. Not that you're going to despise your people or your friends, but you take a stand with your life. You know that God has called you and that your life is transformed. You need to help others to be transformed. Why is it important to live a set-apart life? Because God called us out of the old sinful lifestyle and made us new, free from condemnation, gave us a new spirit. We must be holy, set apart. It is our obligation. We are not our own man, own woman. Uh, we, we belong to a holy God who wants his children to be holy. So Christian, um, if you stand up in this world and you say you are a Christian, you better stand to it. Amen. Because if you are fake, doesn't matter how many followers you may have, amen, you'll, and you, you're not real, you're, you're just hiding under the, the out, outward appearance. Some people, when we speak of holiness or set apart, you may look at how the person dress and may use that outward appearance to, to pave the way. But no, it's holiness begins in the heart. Amen? That's where it begins. If you're going to be perfect, only God can work on your spirit, man, to bring you to that place of perfection. You cannot depend on your own nature, your own will, power. You will try, but you will fail because that old tormenting, demonic, sinful nature is going to come up anyways. Amen. You will not even know you still have it until somebody step on your toes and you will get so violent with them. And then you call to mind, oh, my dear. <laughs> then you know you need to pray. Amen. Amen. So when we're talking about uh, if you have not yet surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, you know, um, you still have a chance. You still can do it to give your life. But I'm speaking to those who have surrendered their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ, been filled with the Holy Ghost. Their, their obligation is to walk perfect before God because he gave you what it is, what it takes to be holy. Amen? If you have received the Holy Spirit, you have what it is to live a holy life because you have God living inside of you. The Bible said our body is the temple of the living God. We're going to another scripture, Colossians 3, 1, 13 to 14. Amen? And it reads, 
who deliver us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. Amen. So only Jesus Christ has the power to deliver us from the power of darkness and to, to be, that we may be translated into the kingdom. Amen? Into that spiritual realm where God wanted mankind before Adam sinned, even though he was flesh, but he, he was spiritual. He did not, he was innocent. He has no idea of anything called evil or wrongdoing. He was perfect in the sight of God. He was naked in the garden, but covered by the, by the glow of God. Amen? And when, when he sinned, that light bulb went off, and he noticed he's naked. So when we get out of the presence of God, we are in darkness. Amen? So he has delivered us from the power of darkness. Amen? All right, let's read that verse again. In whom we have redemption through his blood, verse 14. Even the forgiveness of sin, verse 15 said, Who is the image of the invisible God, firstborn of every creature? So Jesus Christ is the image of God. Image of the invisible God that we cannot see with our eyes. So if I see you, I have seen your spirit. And I will not see you, see you without your spirit. If I see you, I'm looking at your spirit. When you see Jesus, you're looking into the face of the Almighty God. Because he said he made man in his image. So every one of us carries the image of God. And God wants to occupy us back in the spirit. So he wants our spirit to be healed, to be to be renewed, that's why he breathed afresh when he gives the Holy Spirit again to us. So if you don't have God's second breath, you're dead. All right? You're spiritually dead, and he wants you to be alive because dead man can't go to heaven. No dead spirit have any power to move. Because the Bible said the dead in Christ will rise first when Jesus come again. And if you did not have your spirit renewed, you will be hearing the second trumpet. With, there will be no power to take you up. Amen? So we have, we have Jesus today who is here to help us. So verse 15 said, Who is the image of the invisible God? First born of every creature. So, <clears throat> for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions, principalities and powers, all things were created by him and for him. Amen? So people may talk down Jesus. He's just a man. Yes, he was both man and God. Amen? Physically, he was the humanity. Uh, he represents humanity. He's the face of the, the true man, the true God. The true invisible God that we cannot see, just like we cannot see your spirit. But when we see you, we have seen your spirit. So when you see Jesus, you are looking in the face of the Almighty God. And you know, even though we um, were not alive when Jesus walked the earth, you know, but in, in our humanity, in spirit, we can actually visualize because he looked just like a man, but yet he was the almighty God. The voice that spoke to Abraham, to Moses, they only hear the voice, but they didn't see him. But God revealed himself now in person so that mankind can have a true image of who he is, their father is. Amen? Amen. And that's why we need to have our Father's name. Praise the Lord. All right, I'm going. Verse uh, 18, 17 said, 
He is before all things. Amen? Because he's the creator in Genesis that said, let there be. He was the one that spoke everything into existence. And by him all things consist. And he is the head of the, of the church. Amen? Who is the beginning and the firstborn of the dead? He, he died and he rose. Set an example that every man, every woman, every child that, that died will one day rise again. Jesus set that example that mankind will have a hope to rise again. And in that in all things he might have preeminence. Verse 19, for it pleased the Father that in him should all the fullness dwell. And having made peace through his, the blood of his cross. Amen. He came to make peace between God and man. That man can be translated back into the spirit realm with their father. Amen. By him to reconcile all things unto himself. I say whether they be things in the earth or things in heaven. You that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled. So Jesus Christ came to reconcile mankind, to bring us back into the spirit realm that we can be with our heavenly Father. In the body of his flesh through death, to present you holy and blameable, and reprovable in his sight. So God don't want to judge us and send us to a Christless hell. Because sin cannot enter into his kingdom. So every child of God, every human being on the earth. Have an opportunity to accept Jesus Christ in their lives. And the time is coming. It is short. You know, it is short. The Lord is coming. Everything is pointing to his coming. All the prophecies that have foretold, the prophets who have foretold what would happen in the end time, we are exactly at that time now. The only thing that is left to be fulfilled is for the church to be taken out. And the Lord will come again to the earth. And the Bible said some are going to rise you know, with joy, and some will be in fear. If you don't have Jesus, you're going to be risen from the dead in fear and, and agony because you are not saved, and you will know it. Amen? So don't take your salvation. Don't take Jesus' sacrifice simple because he did it for you. He didn't come here to be a show-off. He came to redeem us. Amen? He came to redeem us. Uh, um, the story of the I Israel is uh, a type and shadow of what God did. Deliver them from Egypt, bondage. Bring them to a free land. But the true land is not just Israel. The true land is heaven. Amen. The land that is promised to us is not Jerusalem. It's the heavenly Jerusalem. Amen. So if you want to go to this heavenly Jerusalem... You need to connect with Jesus. So it says, verse 23, if you continue in the faith, grounded, grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which you have heard and which was preached to every creature under heaven, thereof I, Paul, made a minister. Praise be to God. If you have repented of your sins, baptized in the mighty name of Jesus, filled with the Holy Ghost, you have what it takes to live a holy life until Jesus come to receive you unto himself. Be he holy. Amen. If you have not yet started, you can start today. Jesus Christ came for a specific purpose, and the purpose he came was to deliver mankind back into the kingdom, to bring us back from the, the, the sin nature that Satan brought and left disease of sin and debt on the earth 
and Jesus came to give us life. He said, I am come that you might, might have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. Without him, we are heading to hell. The Bible said, where the worm died not. There will be no rescue in hell. There will be a great prayer meeting, but no answer to the prayer. We'll be calling for mercy, but it will be too late. We are living in precious time. Precious time that you, if you have not yet considered giving your life to Jesus, this is the time and the season that you should do it. Amen? This is the day, this is the moment that you need to surrender your life to Jesus. Think about it seriously. If he should come right now, are you ready? Have you obeyed the call? Do you answer the call? Do you know uh, the gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus? And it is an invitation that he has given to you that I came to die. I died for your sin. I paid for it. Satan wants every human being to die and to go to a Christless hell with him. He and his um, one third of the angels were he took and want to be opposition in heaven. War begins in heaven. And they, there was a great fight, a great war, until finally they won and, and Satan was cast on the earth. And the Bible said, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth, for the devil has come down in great wrath. And the first thing he did was to destroy mankind because he knows how precious we were in the eyes of God. And that's why Jesus came to rescue us. Amen. So Christianity is not a religion. Okay. Religion is man-made. But salvation is God-given. Amen. So don't mix them up. And that is why the enemy also create all these religiousness in the world today that people are confused. You don't know it's like counterfeit. You see a dollar, you don't know whether it's real or not. Amen. So there is counterfeit religion. So don't mix up religion with salvation. Salvation is God-given. It's a relationship between you and the creator who created you. Amen. And that if you don't know what to worship and who to worship, you, the one who created me, I call upon you to help me with my life. Amen. It's not going through rituals. It's giving your heart to God. And he loves you. He cares for you. It doesn't matter what Satan trap you to do. That doesn't turn God away from you. He's still reaching out. He's still, every time somebody invites you to church, is God sending an invitation for you. Amen. There's going to be a great marriage supper of the Lamb. Amen. Which is those who have accepted Jesus. He's going to meet up with his church. And all will be in white to meet him in the air. No sin can be in our lives. And the only way that no sin can be in our lives is that we have given our lives over to him. Amen. And he take out the sin nature and put his spirit. Amen. And though the enemy may trip you up at times, but inwardly there is a cleansing, continually cleansing. The word of God continue to cleanse us from our trespasses and our sins. If there is anyone here today, you've never accepted Jesus, make today that day. I'm telling you, these are precious moments. Because if, they, if, if your life ends tomorrow, God forbid, and you're not saved, you'll be going to hell without Jesus. He's the only one that can save a soul. No one else can save you. No one else. None of the prophets can save you. None of the saints who have gone on before you. Don't believe that somebody is going to pray for you and you're going to get through. No. 
Today's your day to accept Jesus for yourself. Amen. You can connect with him for yourself. His door is wide open for, for you to come. Amen. Don't let the enemy um, try to fool you that you're too sinful. No, Jesus paid for those sins. Those sins are not yours anymore. He has already paid for them and give them back to the enemy. Praise the Lord. Am I making any sense today to you? There was one more scripture I want to read for it before I finish, and it was Ephesians chapter 2. And it says, And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sin, where in time past you walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince and the power of the ear, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Amen? Among whom also we all had our conversation in time past in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desire of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Number four, but God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sin, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace are we saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in, in his kindness towards us, true Christ. For by grace are we saved through faith, and that not of ourselves, it is the gift of God. Amen? God has the gift of salvation for you, amen, to be saved. And those who have been saved, don't look down upon those who are not saved because you were once like that. Amen. But he has delivered you. He has took you up, washed you, and make you clean. Be a light. It is a shame for those who pro profess to be Christian and are, are doing bad stuff and causing others to, to, um, who have not yet saved you know, to be discouraged. Because they're looking on this person to, as a, you know, a guide for their lives. They have heard them preach and everything like this. And all of a sudden, they got caught up because they lay themselves low to the enemy baits. Amen. So don't let people's life be your, your measuring stick. Your opportunity is to accept Jesus for yourself. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And the baby said, my time is up. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We, let's stand. We are going to pray. We're going to have a christening right after the prayer. But if you are here today and you have never accepted Jesus as your Savior, there's one more invitation Amen. Your seat in the heaven is still available. He wants you. He wants your life. He wants to change you. He wants to give you a new life. He wants to take away the whole lifestyle and all those addictions and whatever plagues your spirit. He wants to free you from it. So if you'd like to be prayed for today, just come to the altar. Amen. Is there one that need to be filled with the Spirit of God? You have been baptized but not yet filled with God's Holy Spirit. This altar is open. Amen. Every time there is a service, there is an invitation that God is calling for those who want to be with Him in His wonderful heaven. The Bible said, Eyes have not seen, and ears have not heard the things that God is preparing for them that love him. Amen. 
eyes have not seen, ears have not heard the things God is preparing for you. So if you don't have riches down here, don't worry about it. God has more for you than you can imagine. If he, if he established this earth with so many things, what about heaven? What about that glorious kingdom? Amen. That he's gone to prepare and he wants you to be there. He's coming back. And all eyes, the Bible said, shall behold him. Praise the Lord. Praise God. I'll ask one of our ministers just to pray for our sister at the altar at this moment. Praise the Lord Jesus.